Hello, guys. Welcome again to our CNA online class. Remember, this is our eighth class and will be available from Monday to Wednesday. Welcome again. So here is our index. Today we're checking the new seven wonders. Then we're doing our classwork, homework, and at the end, we're checking your workbook. So let's get to work. This unit's name is a bit of culture. So prepare your student book and your workbook. Prepare everything you need. Do you like culture? Do you like traveling? Well, let's start. First, we're checking the new seven wonders. This one, do you know what is this place? Well, this is Machu Picchu and it's in Peru. Machu Picchu, which is nearby the capital of Cusco, can be only visited by foot, train, or helicopter. What is this place? This is the Great Wall of China, and it's located in, of course, China. The Great Wall of China, which was built between the 5th and the 6th century before Christ, is the world's longest man-made structure like in Mulan movie. Have you watched it, guys? Next one. This is the Taj Mahal, and it's in India. The Taj Mahal, which is awesome, is considered the most perfect specimen of Muslim art in India. It's beautiful, right? Do you know this one? It's Christ the Redeemer statue and it's in Rio de Janeiro. The Christ the Redeemer statue, which is an icon for Rio and Brazil, was designed by Acer da Silva Costa. What is this place, guys? The Roman Colosseum, and of course, it's in Rome. The Roman Colosseum, which was used to watch the gladiatorial events, was in use for some 500 years. I would like to, I would have liked to watch a gladiator event with lions, of course. What is this place? Well, this is Petra and it's in Jordan. Petra, which is in Jordan, was declared as World Heritage in 1985. Of course, you know this one, right? What is the name of this, of this wonder? Well, this is Chichen Itza, and it's in Mexico. It's in our country. So it says Chichen Itza, which is in our country, is representative of the Mayan civilization. Have you visited this place? Well, after quarantine ends, I recommend you to visit this place. It's really nice. Now, guys, let's get to our Students book. We're going to start with classwork. So prepare your students book on page 110 and 111. And here we have guys. What do you prefer? I imagine you like culture, you like learning new things, right? So you are going to choose three aspects of culture you enjoy the most. You don't need to write it, just just three aspects. We have art, music, short films or animations, other people's social media sites, movies or plays at the theater, poems and short stories, and TV or radio shows and podcasts. Choose three. Well, I would choose music, short films or animations, and other people's social media sites. Th those are my options, guys. If you prefer different options, it's okay, don't worry. Now guys, today we're checking grammar. So take out your notebook, please. So let's see. As in every class, guys, I recommend you first listen and then 
take notes. Now, remember we're checking relative classes. And what is a relative class? Well, a relative class complements a main class. And we have two types of relative classes. We're going to check them. So we have defining relative classes and we have non-defining relative classes. And today we're checking the difference between these type of relative classes. So the first difference is that defining relative clauses complete the meaning of the sentence. And the sentence is not clear without the defining relative clause. On the other hand, the non-defining relative clauses, they just give us extra information. And the sentence is clear if we don't write the non-defining relative clause. So now let's see some examples. Here we have, the movie is called The Bachelor. But then we ask, which movie? Oh, the movie which I'm going to watch is called The Bachelor. So this part is a relative clause, defining relative clause. We need this sentence for the whole sentence to be clear. Ready? Now, on the other hand, we have this example. We have, gravity was directed by Alfonso Cuaron. The sentence is clear, but if we want to add extra information, we write, gravity, which won seven Oscars, was directed by Alfonso Cuaron. Ready? So, now we are comparing both sentences. In this side, we need this part of the sentence to be clear. In this side, we don't need this, this part of the sentence, but we add it because we want to give extra information. Now let's see more examples. Now guys, for this part, we, I need you to remember that we have some relative pronouns. We have where, which, who, and that. Now, how do we use them? How do we use them? Or what is the difference in defining relative clause and non-defining relative clause? Well, here we go. Now, here we have four sentences. Remember, in defining relative clauses, we have the movie, which I'm going to watch is called The Bachelor. The boy, who I like, is handsome. In defining relative clauses that we check one week, ago, one week ago, I'm sorry, we could change which with that, and that was correct. Or we could change who with that, and that was correct too. Now, when we talk about non-defining relative clauses, for example, gravity, which won seven Oscars, was directed by Alfonso Cuaron, or Angel, who is, the, who is very handsome, is the boy I like. In non-defining relative clauses, we cannot use that. We cannot change which for that. And we cannot change who for that. So my recommendation is if you are using non-defining relative clauses, use the relative pronoun that corresponds. If you are using defining relative clauses, of course you can change the relative pronouns for that. Now let's see another, well, the last difference. Here we have, remember, in defining relative clauses, we had subject, verb, and we always need our relative pronoun, always. And when we had subject and subject, we, the relative pronoun was optional. So if you wanted to write the relative pronoun, you write it, and if you didn't, you just don't. You, you could omit it. What happens with non-defining relative clauses? If you have subject verb, you need the relative pronoun, and if you have subject subject, you need the relative pronoun. You always need the relative pronoun. And here, you need it, 
it was optional. Now the last difference, or well, something I think by this moment you have already noticed, is that in non-defining relative classes, we use commas. Have you noticed that? We use commas here, commas, comma, comma, to separate the non-defining relative classes. Well, guys, I hope it was clear enough. You know, if you have any question, you can write us comments on Google Classroom and we'll help you there. Don't worry, guys. If you didn't understand something, ask, please. We're here to help you. Remember that. So, if you are here, I recommend you to pause the video and take notes. Take the notes you need to um, answer the exercises properly. Remember, we're checking your notes when we come back. Do you remember we were talking about the new seven wonders? So here we have some examples of non-defining relative classes. For example, Machu Picchu can be only visited by foot, train, or helicopter. This is a correct sentence. This sentence is clear, but if we want to give extra information, we can add this. Ready? Next example. The Roman Coliseum was in use for some 500 years. The sentence is clear again, but we can add an extra information. And the last example about Mexico. Chichen Itza is representative of the Mayan civilization. If we want to add a non-defining relative clause, we can do it. Ready? Now let's answer the exercise number three in your student book. It says, look at the sentences in the grammar box. Try reading them without the relative clauses involved. Which relative clause contains information that completes the meaning of the sentence? So, which sentence is, has a defining relative clause? A, B, C, or D? Please pause the video to read the sentences and choose your option. Letter B. Letter B is the one that contains a defining relative clause. Remember, defining relative clause, you need the clause for the sentence to be clear. Now in exercise four, we have, look at the sentences in the grammar box again and answer the questions. Number one, which relative pronoun can be replaced by that? Well, the answer is B. Remember, in defining relative clauses, we can change which with that or who with that. And in non-defining relative clauses, we cannot change them. Letter number two, can any of the relative pronouns be omitted? No, in all the examples, the relative pronoun is part of the subject. So we cannot omit it. And number three, what do you notice about the punctuation in the sentences? What do you need always? Well, every time you have a non-defining relative clause, we need commas. So if you, are, if you have non-defining relative clauses in letter A, C, and D, you need commas. Listen to a part of a radio show. What is FOMO? Do you ever get it? So let's listen to the audio and the question you have to answer is, what is FOMO? Which is an acronym, it means something. What is it, have you heard it before? We're gonna find out. Do you find yourself checking your phone in the middle of the night? Do you save articles to read later, but never get around to reading them? Perhaps you stay up late just to play the video game that everyone is talking about. If you're at home one evening after school, what do you do? You check what's on at the movies on your phone. Oh no, it's the last night they're showing The Last Jedi, which you've always wanted to see. Too late to go out now, you think? Let's see what's on TV. Ah, it's the final episode of the show that everyone's watching. You know that tomorrow you're going to find out what happens from your friends who are watching it right now. Meanwhile, the game of League of Legends you're playing is going on without you. The problem is, of course, 
that there is always something going on without you. These days, there's so much good stuff happening out there that it's impossible to catch it all. And the bigger problem is that you know it's going on because you get notifications, reminders, emails, and messages telling you. And this creates a worry that won't go away. It's the worry that someone else is having more fun than you. Welcome to the modern disease, fear of missing out, also known as FOMO. All right, so what is the answer? What did that mean? FOMO is, of course, an acronym for fear of missing out. I'm sure we can all relate to that. Uh, when your friends tell you, hey, do you want to go out to watch a movie and you either have to do homework or your mom wants to take you to church or you don't have the money to go and you can just say, ah, well, no, I can't. And while you're doing whatever else, you just keep thinking, ah, they're having fun there without me, right? So that is fear of missing out. Do you ever get it? I think we all of us get it at some point in which you are like, oh, I wish I could do X. Whether it's a sleepover, your mom didn't let you go, or an event that you're seeing everyone be excited about and you cannot go, right? Especially now with social media that everyone is like rubbing in your face. What are they doing? What are they eating? And you just wish you could be there, right? So, knowing that, we're going to move on to exercise 6. Complete the sentences beginnings, 1 through 5, with the relative clauses, A through E. At which or who if the clause is non-defining, and that if it's defining. So remember, a non-defining clause is when you are adding additional information. It doesn't change what you're talking about. That is, as defining says, to specify what are you talking about. So I'm going to play the audio again. Try to match one with A, B, C, D, E, and you have to put a word in between. All right? Do you find yourself checking your phone in the middle of the night? Do you save articles to read later, but never get around to reading them? Perhaps you stay up late just to play the video game that everyone is talking about. If you're at home one evening after school, what do you do? You check what's on at the movies on your phone. Oh no, it's the last night they're showing The Last Jedi, which you've always wanted to see. Too late to go out now, you think? Let's see what's on TV. Ah! It's the final episode of the show that everyone's watching. You know that tomorrow you're going to find out what happens from your friends who are watching it right now. Meanwhile, the game of League of Legends you're playing is going on without you. The problem is, of course, that there is always something going on without you. These days, there's so much good stuff happening out there that it's impossible to catch it all. And the bigger problem is that you know it's going on because you get notifications, reminders, emails, and messages telling you. And this creates a worry that won't go away. It's the worry that someone else is having more fun than you. Welcome to the modern disease, fear of missing out, also known as FOMO. All right, so please answer Take a little bit more time if you need to. All right, so let's check it together. Number one, perhaps you stay up late just to play the video game. And that is a defining clause. That, and the answer is A, everyone is talking about. Which video game? Oh, that video game, right? It's fair, it's defining, it's specifying which are you talking about, right? Two, it's the last night they're showing, showing the last Jedi. This one is which, which E, you've always wanted to see. You always wanted to see is just additional information, so you don't need, is not a defining clause. Three, is the final episode of the show. What show? So it's of course a defining clause. That, B, everyone is watching. The final episode of the show that everyone is watching. Four, you know that tomorrow you're going to find out what happens from your friends who are watching it right now. So we are saying who because it's not defining. Uh, the friends 
It's just a description, it's a fourth description to say that are watching it right now. Five, and this creates a worry that won't go away. What kind of worry? Oh, the worry that doesn't go away. Specifically, not any worry, but this specific thing. It's a defining clause. All right? So, having checked that out, let's move on to exercise seven. Exercise seven says, combine the sentences to make one sentence containing a non-defining relative clause. So, all of these ones, we can use which, we can use who, we can even use that, but all of these ones are non-defining. Some of them are going to fit in the middle of sentences, so you have to enclose them in commas, yes? Like the example we have over here. Number one, FOMO is the secret disease that many people suffer from. And then you have, it can affect anyone with access to the internet. You join them together saying, FOMO, coma, which can affect anyone with the access to internet, is the secret disease that many people suffer from. So, that is how you join them together. I'm going to give you some time. Please pause here to answer, and we will check it in a bit. Okay, let's check it together. Number two, when people start conversations with, did you see, do you get an uncomfortable feeling in your stomach? This is a common phrase these days. Of course, it would sound better if we put it in the middle. So, when people start conversations with, did you see, coma, here we insert, or non-defining relative clause, which start conversations with a phrase, a phrase is it, which is a common phrase these days, you get an uncomfortable feeling. That is the answer. Number three, the people it affects, coma, we're talking about people, so we say who, are worried that they might be missing something important, closing with coma, run to their phones when they hear it, ping. Number four, most notifications, it says, are not really wor worth looking at. The additional information is in between commas, which might be about music videos, film trailers, yada yada, some examples in between commas, which is the non-defining clause. Five comes some young people, coma, who check Facebook while answering texts and watching TV, spend up to 18 hours a day reading or watching things. And finally, six, studies have shown that we sleep less because of our devices, coma, we're talking about devices, things, so we say, which include smartphones and tablets. All right, I hope all of that is understood. We're going to move on to exercise eight. Work in pairs, you can. <laughs> Add at least three relative clauses to this paragraph to make it more informative. Now, because we're adding relative clauses, we can be defining or non-defining. In this case, I think most of them are going to be non-defining, adding additional information. I have marked you the ideal places where I would like you to add this uh, information, a little bit of uh, a sentence, probably. We have, first of all, phone settings can be changed to stop them from interrupting you. What can you say about interrupting you? What can you add about phone settings or how you are being interrup interrupted? <laughs> we have, consider your social media. What can you say about social media? What can you add there? Another idea is to play shame with friends. What about your friends? What can you add here that has to be doing with this, all right? So, I'll leave you a little bit. Try to complete it in your book. All right, let's check. I am going to go reading straight, and I'm going to read you with the additions that I made. Personally, you could have made different additions. This is up to you as long as you answered it. There are many ways of fighting FOMO in your life. Sophie Kleeman, who is a journalist, for example, has some advice for us about spending less time on our devices. First of all, phone settings can be changed to stop them from interrupting you. 
coma, which are which is useful if you're trying to focus. I think the settings to that don't interrupt you are very useful in that case. Phones can be a problem at night. Don't keep your phone in your bedroom, even if it's on vibrate. Buy an alarm clock instead. Consider your social media, which can be very distracting, and decide honestly whether you need 24 access to it. Do you just have it on your laptop? Another idea is to play shame with friends who probably have the same problem as you. Sorry, correct the problem. <laughs> the first person to use his or her phone has to buy the coffee. So, these are some suggestions on to how could you complete this. You can, now, of course, do other non-defining relative clauses. So, let's con continue to next exercise. Exercise 9. Now, over here it says, listen to the sentences. We actually don't need to listen. You just have to figure out, is this a defining relative clause or a non-defining relative clause? Put commas in the sentences containing non-defining relative clauses. So, you are going to analyze each sentence and say, is this defining or is it not defining? And when you decide this is non-defining, you are going to put commas in the necessary places. Okay? So, please answer in your book and I'll check it in a bit. Okay, let's check it together. Number one, she threw away the phone which didn't have a camera. Now, is this something defining what phone? Not really, it's additional information. So, this is a non-defining clause. Where do we put the comma? Of course, before the which. She took away the phone, comma, which didn't have a camera. Number two, the men who didn't have tickets were told to leave the theater. Which men? Oh, those who didn't have the tickets. This is a defining clause. It's describing what people were stopped. Three, my sister who lives in Singapore is studying art. Now, this one you can see either way, but I like to choose it as non-defining. Now, it could be defining if this person has more than one sister. So it would be like, ah, the one that lives in Singapore. But... In the case that this is just one person, that would be not defining. Also, the information is between, is a who, and then there's a verb afterwards, which really hints me that it needs some commas. So I think it's more appropriate to call it non-defining. And put the comma there, and another comma there. My sister, comma, who lives in Singapore, comma, is studying art. It's just describing something that your sister does, which is live in Singapore. All right, let's continue to our last exercise on the student book. 10. 10 is usually choose, but for ease of us working, we are going to do exercise two. Work in pairs, well, we can't work in pairs, sadly. Talk to your partner. You're going to write in your notebook instead about a time when you have experienced FOMO. When have you experienced the fear of missing out? What advice can you offer to someone who may be suffering this? These two questions I want you to answer in your notebook. Yes? I'm going to give you an example. One time you ex I experienced FOMO. Everyone has experienced. In my case, uh, when I was younger, I used to really like comic books. So, of course... When I got online and I saw everyone having fun at San Diego's Comic Con International, is the biggest Comic Con in the world, I was very jealous. There's a lot of cool people with costumes, a lot of like exclusive items and announcements and famous people uh, doing talks and panels and it's like really, really cool, right? And I still wish I could have, I could go, right? Um, but... What do I do to combat this fear of missing out is to, instead of seeing the negatives, oh, I cannot do this, I cannot do this, uh, think about what you can do, right? In my case, I went to some smaller local cons, the case of anime, which I'm not that fond of, but it was still fun. And last year, I got the chance to go to a very big convention in Guadalajara. That's like the big picture, everyone in costume, and I swear... That dot over there is me, I pinky swear, 
uh, it was really fun it was an amazing experience for me I hope we can I can repeat it again this year hopefully who knows uh, but um, it wasn't the same of course it's not the same as Comic Con but it's still a really cool experience that I could get to myself so yeah not a replacement but something that I could do instead of just dwelling over what I can't right so please write your experience in your notebook and after you do that, that will be everything for your student book. Let's move on. Hello guys, I am Teacher Quotely, and let's see what you have for homework. It is workbook pages 104 and 105. Okay, grammar, defining and non-defining relative clauses. Remember, a defining relative clause is when it gives you necessary information and a non-defining clause it is when it gives you extra information then number one you have to read the sentences and complete the table a defining relative clause or a non-defining relative clause or if it doesn't have any relative clause exercise two choose what the word symbol refer to in the sentences in one, the storm that knocked down several trees in our garden last year also caused a lot of damage in our town. You have to check what is that referring to, if several trees, the storm, on or our town. In this case, it is referring to B, the storm. Exercise 3. Complete the second sentence so that it means the same as the first. Use one word on. You have to choose so it has a relative clause in the blank, for example, in the first one. We watch that show every week. I love it. And this, the second one it has to have the same meaning. I love that show blank. We watch every week. The correct answer will be which. I love that show, which we watch every week. 4. Underline the relative pronouns that can be replaced by that. Okay. 5. Choose the correct option to complete the sentences. Uh, example number 1. The car that who I want costs 20,000 euros. Remember that we only use who for people, so the car is not people, so the answer is that. 6. Choose the option which is closest in meaning to the purse. Exercise 7. Put the words in the correct order to make sentences. It is, well, simple, you have to order. Exercise 8. Are the words in bold correct or incorrect? Correct those that are incorrect. I have you the first one. The piano is the instrument who he plays in the van. Uh, as I told you, who is only for people and the instrument it is not people. So you have to change it. You have to correct. It is incorrect. Okay, pronunciation. Relative clause. Here it says, like I told you at the first, a relative clause. A defining relative clause gives necessary information and a non-defining relative clause gives extra information. It, it is that simple. Let's see, exercise 9. Listen to the sentences. Do you hear a defining relative clause D or a non-defining relative clause N? Choose the correct option. I'm going to play the audio. makes a really good living is an artist. Two, the friend that I told you about is an artist. Three, the play, which is very funny, was written in only two weeks. Four, we went to the theater, which is next to the museum. Five, we went to the theater that's next to the museum. Six, the film which won the award is really excellent. That was the audio. If you 
If you didn't get everything, listen again, go back, and the, that's it. Uh, that is your what you have for homework. Uh, remember, you have one week to do it. Uh, we'll stay at home. Mm -hmm. And bye. See you. Hi guys, it's Abby again. This time I'll be checking the homework with you. So open your workbook on page 100. Exercise 11. Listen to a tour guide in Paris, France and match the statements with the photos A, B or C. So, with the audio you've already heard, let's see the answers. Number 1. It's about the 2nd century. Letter B. The Wing Victory. Number 2. The portrait is a masterpiece. Letter A. The Mona Lisa. Number 3. Is one of the finest examples of French Gothic architecture. Letter C. Notre Dame. Number 4. It was painted between 1503 and 1506. Letter a, the Mona Lisa. Number five, it's made of marble. Letter B, the wind victory. Number six, it's made of limestone. Letter C, Notre Dame. Number seven, it's on the permanent displays at the Louvre. Letter A, the Mona Lisa. Number eight, the sculpture is unknown. Letter B. The wing victory. So let's go to the next exercise. Exercise 12. Listen to the talk. What is the speaker's purpose? So, the man is telling kind of a creepy story, but at the same time he's giving a detailed description. So, the answer is C. Exercise 13. Listen again. Match the adjectives with the nouns. So, with the same audio you have to answer. So, let's check. Number 1. Chili goes with letter G, so it's chilly air. Number two, goes is looking. This one goes with school, I. Number three, creepy tunnels, so it's letter D. Number four, infamous guillotine, J. Number five, famous buildings, so it's letter E. Six, artistic patterns, so it's letter B. Number seven, threatening door so it's letter a number eight spiral staircase so it's letter h number nine frightening welcome so it's letter c number 10 spooky this one goes with f spooky gallery so exercise 14 listen again and choose the correct answers to the questions again with the same audio let's answer number one what place is being described? So, the audio is describing C, the catacombs. Number two, how does it feel down there? Letter A, cool. Number three, where did all the bones come from? Letter B, the cemeteries. Number four, in what year were the bones moved to tunnels? In year 1786. So it's letter A. Number five, who ordered the bones to be arranged into artistic patterns? So, it's letter A, Napoleon I. Number six, what language is the sign in? Letter C, French. Number seven, what kinds of bones are described as smiling? Letter B, skulls. And finally, number eight, why do people sometimes try to steal? Letter C, bones. So let's go to the next page. Exercise 15. Choose the correct relative pronouns to complete the sentences. Choose minus where a relative pronoun is not needed. So in this blue box, we have a guide to know when we're going to use what. For example, which we're going to use it when we're talking about animals, objects, or ideas. We're going to use who when we're talking about people and that if we are talking about animals, objects, ideas, and people. So number one, they've just played that song that you like. Number two, it's a special keyboard that is designed to be more comfortable. Number three, we, when we go to Lima, we're going to visit the gallery John told us about. We don't need anything. Number four, is that the woman who discovered those valuable paintings? Because we're talking about this lady. Number five, it was a surprise to see a museum which featured digital images. Number six, 
The paintings that the museum owns are not for sale. Number seven. My favorite poster is of a painting that I saw in the Metropolitan Museum in New York. And finally, number eight. She's the artist who is going to teach a class here next month. So, let's go to the next exercise. Exercise 16. Read the sentences. Are the relative pronouns necessary or unnecessary? The relative pronouns are the ones that, it, that are involved. So, we know that a pronoun is necessary when we have a verb after the relative pronoun or it's unnecessary when we have a subject after the relative pronoun so let's go to check number one the musician that opened the concert have been playing together for five years it is necessary we have a verb open number two the drummer used a kitsch which her father bought her for her 16th birthday it's unnecessary we have a subject Number three, the singer who writes songs for the band is also a poet. We do need it because we have a verb. Number four, together they make music that speaks to young people around the world. This was is necessary because again there's a verb next to the pronoun. Number five, the song that we just heard is one of their most popular ones. It's unnecessary because we have a subject. Number six, when they first started, they play in a small club, which their friend owned. This one is unnecessary, because we have a subject next to the pronoun. Number seven, the keyboard player also designs the t-shirts that are for sale at each show. This one is necessary, because we have a verb. Number eight, anyone who didn't get a ticket will have to listen on the radio. And this one isn't necessary, because we have a verb. So let's go to the next exercise. Exercise 17. Put the words in the correct order to complete sentences with relative clauses. Number one. It's a famous Argentinian art museum, which has many famous paintings by Latin American artists. Number two. The Museum of Modern Art in Warsaw is a museum which focuses on Polish modern artists. Number three, the Sao Paulo Museum of Art has a collection which includes painters from many different European and South American countries. Number four, Os Gemeos are Brazilian street artists who paint colorful murals all over the world. Number five, John Singleton Coplay was an artist who was known for his paintings of famous and important people. Number six, the Whitney Museum of American Art is a place that sometimes hosts exhibitions for on and coming artists. Let's go to the next exercise. Exercise 18. Read the sentences or the relative pronouns, the subject or the object of the clauses. So we're going to know if the relative pronoun is a subject when it's followed by a verb, or if it's an object when it's followed by another subject. So let's go and check. Number one. The bus which stops on the corner goes directly to the art gallery. We're talking about subject. Number two, kids often spend a lot of time watching videos which they find online. The relative pronoun is the object. Number three, a guy who I know from school is working at the ticket office. The pronoun is an object. Number four, I bought a second-hand book that has an excellent examples of Impressionist art. The pronoun is a subject. Number five. Some films have characters who you can really relate to. This time, the pronoun is an object. Number six. She's excited to see a play which is based on one of her favorite books. So, the pronoun is a subject. Number seven. The movie theater, which is near my house, has a luxury seats with tables. The pronoun is a subject. And finally, eight. She saw the documentary that she read about online. The pronoun is talking about an object. The pronoun is an object. So, let's go to the next and final exercise, exercise 19. Combine the two sentences into one with a relative clause. So we're going to use 
for example, the words that, which, who, to join the two sentences together. So number one, they are already given it to you. They are these great masterpieces that are made from different color lights. So number two, the painter bought new paint brushes. The paint brushes were made in Italy. So the answer is, the painter bought new paint brushes. We have that or which were made in Italy. We get rid of the paint brushes. Number three, the ancient Romans decorate their homes with paintings. The paintings were later discovered by archaeologists. So the answer is, the ancient Romans decorated their homes with paintings, that which were later discovered by archaeologists. Again, we use that or which. Number four, MC Esker was a famous graphic artist. He was from the Netherlands. So to join these two sentences, we're going to use who or that. So, MC Esther was a famous graphic artist who or that was from the Netherlands. Number five, the tango is a well-known dance. The dance is from Argentina and Uruguay. So, the tango is a well-known dance that or which is from an Argentina and Uruguay. Again, we're using that or which. And finally, number six, Graphic novels are a new kind of literature. Graphic novels are enjoyed by kids around the world. So, we are going to use that or which. So, it would be graphic novels are a new kind of literature that which, that or which are enjoyed by kids. And that's it. That's everything. Good job. We are done with checking your homework. Remember to correct if it's necessary and see you in the next time.